And I'd like to make one note about the Internal Revenue Service. Um, some time ago, several years ago, here in Chico, California, Northern California, United States, uh, there was an interview with two IRS agents on a local uh, television news show, um, mainstream media news show. It was quite early in the morning, but I happened to be up and watching it. And they were very nice people, a man and a woman. And uh, it, it fascinated me. These, these are very nice people. And they started talking about uh, small businesses and self-employed people and how because of the, the tax code, the way it is, being so unfair to poor people, low-income people, that, that unanimously, they suspect unanimously every small business, every self-employed individual out there must, must cheat on their taxes in order to survive. I wish to God I had saved the news clip. I wish I had my VCR running, but I didn't. And um, I suppose I could contact the local uh, uh, news station about uh, getting that out of archives. In fact, uh, I just thought about that right now, but um, that might be something I'll do in the future to get that clip because it was just beautiful. And I feel like these, uh, these agents are probably representative of most of the agents at the IRS. They're, they're nice people and they, they are not going to just follow arbitrary, capricious orders from the New World Order, working through the Federal Reserve Bank to, uh, to intimidate, harass um, ordinary American citizens that are not at all the cause of the economic problems. Hey, take it out of my share in the lumber. Take it out of my share in the oil, okay? In fact, please, if you can, send me a check, and I'm sure that a lot of people watching would agree that, uh, you know, this is the way. You want to stimulate the economy, we'll take some of that money that's in SDR, these special drawing rights. These people have stored numbers enough to purchase the earth several times over, I understand and get that money into circulation. I'm not telling you to print more money. I'm just telling you to take some of that money that they've got stored as numbers and get it into circulation. Send the poor checks. We need, you know, hundred, two hundred thousand dollars, three hundred thousand. In some areas, the housing prices are ridiculous just for an average ordinary house in my hometown of Santa Cruz, California. Uh, the last time I looked, it was, you're not going to get nothing for less than a half a million dollars. You know, so what kind of income do you need to bring in and how many people are going to be able to bring that income in? Not many. Not many. So what's going to happen? An increasing number of people are just going to be poor and destitute, just oppressed, struggling just to pay their day-to-day -day bills. Uh, here's a little tidbit. 85% of the housing in San Francisco is rental housing. 85%. The last time I looked, and that was about five years ago, the figures might even be higher today. Okay, but uh, this could happen all over the nation if we let it. It's from deregulation, which is taking the protections away from the consumers, you and me. Okay, the people at the top are deciding the fine print. They're manipulating markets. Believe me, I've heard from the horse's mouth. Okay, I walked into a bank here locally. Okay, and I talked to the, the bank manager, and he was very candid with me. And I'm not going to name names. But he told me when I was looking for a loan, I got my real estate license a few years ago, and I was interested in, uh, in helping to uh, develop affordable housing so somebody could purchase a home on a minimum wage job again. You know, maybe between two and three hundred dollars a month is all somebody could afford perhaps on their mortgage. But that was my dream is to, is to make this happen, maybe in the form of a mobile home park, a nice mobile home park where people can own their own homes and a little piece of land, have a little tiny slice of the American pie. You know, this was my dream. But I walked in there about a loan, and he told me, oh, no, straight up, you're going to need at least $100,000 yourself. And, and I don't know anybody with that kind of cash laying around. So I was kind of out of business. You know, it kind of popped my dream. But uh, he went on to tell me a story about a fellow that came into this area, and he paid twice the going rate for a house. In other words, if houses, uh, average three-bedroom, two-bath house was going for $100,000, uh, the next day, because this guy paid twice the going rate, $200,000, let us say, uh, virtually the next day, the real estate companies and the, uh, the appraisers working for the banks deciding the uh, value, the worth of the, uh, the house, uh, were using that as their new what they call comparable. So in other words, if you're an existing homeowner, uh, you're tempted to kiss the ground the scammer walked on. 
and say, wow, thank you, mister. You just put $100,000 in my pocket in equity in my home. If I sold my house today, it's not worth 100000 It's worth 200000 So you can see the great temptation that people have been put under existing homeowners to go along with this program. But now put it on the flip side. Okay, imagine you're a struggling young couple trying to save a down payment. Okay, to buy a house based at the hundred thousand dollar figure. Okay, scrimping together a few bucks here and there what you could save, okay, for a down payment, and then you find out the news that the housing prices just doubled overnight. Your dream has been burst. It's become nothing more than a pipe dream now to ever be a homeowner. The American dream has been snatched away from us. If you want to know how we've been divided as Americans, this is it. Between homeowners and non-homeowners, folks, wake up. 